Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this video is called Concept Design is About the Idea, Not the Level of Finish. So this video comes up because of a Twitter thread that concept artist Ian McHugh started, and that I chimed in on, about the beauty and utility of rougher concept art in today's film industry. Ian was commenting on another artist, Callum Alexander Watt, who recently posted a bunch of his work for Ant-Man 3, and Ian wished that more modern concept art could look like this. The issue is that a lot of projects these days require more realistic looking art, and that's a shame, because true design is about the idea, not the finishing style of the final output. So first I'm going to give you my opinion on the subject, and then I'll talk briefly about the reality of today's concept landscape, and hopefully this topic will spawn some good discussions in both the comments and beyond. So in my ideal world, as I stated, design is about the idea, not the level of finish. You may have heard of a napkin sketch, the super rough and ugly sketches possibly drawn on a real napkin at lunch with the director. And here's a great example that Ian posted, which I remembered from a Star Wars Art Of book. These were sketches that George Lucas made to express his ideas to concept artist Ralph McQuarrie. Remember, as a concept artist, your goal is communication. It's to give enough information to the next person in the chain so they can do their job at 100%. So these Lucas sketches are a great example. He made this simple drawing, which he gave to Ralph, and I suspect Joe Johnson as well, and he gave them enough information to let them do what they did best. And here's some of the results. It's a beautiful painting, certainly not photoreal, but enough information for the next person in the chain to do what they do best. So these paintings were handed off to the next person who made the scale model for the film, or possibly the full-sized ship. The person who made the X-Wing models are great at fabrication, and they can add some of their own design flair in the greebles and details on the ship. And voila, the finished X-Wing from the film. One of the most iconic designs of all time, and it started as a scribble. Each person using their skills of communication to help the next person in the process. Here's a more personal example. When I first started working at Blur Studio 25 years ago as a 3D artist, I got this piece of artwork from concept artist Chuck Wojtkiewicz. Now this is way more than a napkin sketch, but it's not photoreal, and it really doesn't matter. First of all, it's a great design, it's a fantastic idea. And then number two, it gave me enough information that as the next person in the chain, I could do what I did best. And so I made the final image for the kids' TV spot. By the way, please do forgive the simpleness of the 3D model. It was 25 years ago, and this was my first professional job. Here's a couple of other simple sketch designs I love. J.J. Abrams explained what he wanted for BB-8, a fantastic design idea that someone took his scribbles and made sing with details and extra design thinking. And here's Ryan Church on the design for a vehicle in Star Wars Episode 3. Now, there are times when rougher sketches are not ideal. For example, if you're trying to work out the spatial relationships in a large architectural environment, then a concept artist who uses 3D is likely a good idea. Or if you're trying to design lighting, obviously a pencil sketch won't communicate what needs to be communicated, so having someone who paints is a must. Or in some cases, having a single, super-polished, iconic painting is great as a touchstone to make sure that all the artists working on a particular area or world are on the same page. And finally, if you're trying to pitch the project to executives, having some super-polished paintings is a good way to sell and align the people paying for the project. But somewhere along the way, because it got easier to make fast photoreal paintings using techniques like 3D and photo bashing, it seems that every single concept image now has to be photoreal almost from the very start. And that's a real shame in my opinion because there are many, many artists out there who have a looser style, but have some of the best ideas in the biz, and I feel they're being underused. I love to say that as an aspiring concept artist, it's your ideas that's the most important, and I certainly believe that. But sadly, not everyone believes it, or aren't given the luxury of believing it due to budget and client concerns. So in closing, if you're given the chance to become an art director, I'd personally recommend to try as much as possible to focus on the ideas and less on the polish. And when assembling a team, maybe make sure you have a variety of artists with different skills, some who might be looser, and a few people who can make photoreal paintings for when those skills are necessary. And for bonus points, remember that just because someone does photoreal images or looser sketches doesn't mean they can't adapt and learn if given the chance. A number of times I've hired people for what I believe they could do, instead of just what they have already done, and I've been rewarded with some super kick-ass work that I might not have gotten otherwise. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this gives you some stuff to think about. And if you want to see more art lessons, tutorials, and uh, articles about these sorts of topics, please go to neilblevins.com and then go to the art lesson section. And if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video on my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much.